Welcome to Father and Son, and welcome to you, Tom. Morning, Dad. In good form? I think so. Well, we've got the Grand Prix on this weekend, and uh, it's going to be interesting to see how many turn up. There's a big, uh, big uh, debate going on about whether or not we should keep it. I think we've got it for one more year that they'll have to negotiate next year. My own view is I think it's a good thing to keep. It does put Melbourne on the map all over the world. We've only got two events to do that. One's the tennis. Australian Open and the others the Grand Prix and then the third one's the Melbourne Cup which is growing in status. I think it's quite important even if it's going to cost us 56 million I think you know, there's no doubt that we do get benefits from it. However I do think the government ought at least attempt to do a cost benefit analysis before it makes its decision. What do you think? Well I'm perhaps less enthusiastic about, about it than what you were. Now when, we, when the Grand Prix moved from Adelaide to Melbourne in 1996 the first couple of years only cost between one and a half and two million dollars, which is a negligible amount for the state to pay it. Yep. Um, at the moment, you know, Ted Bailey is trying desperately to, to shore up the budget bottom line. And you're right, I mean, you've got to look at the cost benefit. You can say, well, if it costs 50 or 60 mil, but let's say it brings in benefits of, I don't know, several hundred mil, then you'd probably keep it. Sure. The problem is, I don't think anybody's done that analysis. Um, no, and they should. In fact, Ted Bailey said he would. But this thing about putting Melbourne on the map, I mean, does it really? I mean, studies have shown that even hosting the Olympics, you know, people come for the Olympics and that's it, they go, they don't come back again. I mean, you and I went to Seoul for the 1988 Olympics. I mean, you might have been back there since, but I certainly haven't. No. Uh, we went to Moscow once and, uh, well, you wouldn't want to repeat that experience, certainly not in the old days. You know, to people, I mean, people who watch it on TV, they see a racetrack, that's all they see, you know, once the Formula One season oh, starts. Oh, they haven't been to Melbourne, they see a beautiful city, it gets well exposed, Well, because Alfred doesn't... Park's right in the middle of the yeah. city. Yeah, anyway. Well, I think they do. Look, well, I think, look, they've got to do the cost-benefit analysis, otherwise, by they'll be highly criticised, I think, for extending the contract without the rationale they need. Absolutely. And look, when, when, when Kenneth did it back in 96, you know, Melbourne was still pretty depressed. Um, it was seen as a great coup. It was certainly something the public liked. Yeah. I think now, you know, people look at it, I mean, the attendances have fallen. I mean, it is well, Once you've been a few times, it's not... You know, when you first go to a Grand Prix, it's fantastic because mm. it's so different to anything you've ever seen. But once you go every year for a while, I mean, I've, only, I've missed the last three. Otherwise, I've seen every single one. I'm not going this year. This is the third one I would have missed, but I, I, I'm not going. I'm not a, going. A, a colleague of mine at 3AW had a very good summary of the Grand Prix. He said, said it's, a, it's a, essentially attended by all these people who say they support Ferrari, but they all drive Commodores. <laughs> oh, that was very good. Anyway, we'll say, but look, the state government does have to go through the, the you know, if, if only to, to justify the decision. I mean, I suspect we probably will keep it. Although I must say that the Premier has been backtracking on quite a few promises. I mean, there was, they were in opposition, they were going to get rid of the Human Rights Charter and how they're going to keep it. Uh, the Grand Prix had to be looked at. Well, now maybe it will just be kept. Uh, there was going to be a... a, 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 a um, commission to look into corruption, that's been watered oh, down. Well, they've got that, they've just got to appoint the person now, mm. so they appear to be having some difficulty again. Well, speaking what of about, appointing people, what about the future fund? Yeah, that's amazing. Now, the, Peter Costello, the former treasurer, was the, the architect and he designed the fund back when we had the surpluses at a federal level, that's yeah. a distant memory now, but Put about uh, 70 billion 60 aside. or 70 billion aside, and it's, it's been pretty well run, you know, they didn't lose money during the financial crisis, and, and, and that's... They got rid of all those Telstra shares. They've sold down out of Telstra, and uh, apparently Costello is the Future Fund's board uh, choice to take over as chairman, but uh, I think the government doesn't really want to do that, do they? Well, they've decided they won't. I mean, they've been hands. The process should have been over about three months ago. Murray's quite annoyed with them. They haven't put in the chairman. Well, the board wanted somebody internally. They sent Gonski in to ask the board who they wanted. Gonski reported it wasn't unanimous, but by far the most popular person was Peter Costello. And the government turns around and says, we might appoint Gonski now. You know. Well, they have. But, but the, the, there's a serious issue at stake here, leaving aside the politics of it. The, the, the future fund's independence from the government has to be sacrosanct. It's a huge chunk of money. You know, It's yes. one of the larger funds of its type in the world. And you know, within about a decade, the, the paying off the liabilities of all the, the state's superannuation sector, that is essentially superannuation for public servants, that will be done. And there'll be a massive debate then as to what to do with that pile of money. Now, you can just imagine if, you know, Bob Brown was still controlling things. I mean, you, it would be wasted. Um, but the yeah. idea that the government wants to have a, a strong say in the chairman of the fund, 
against the supposedly independent board, to me, is a worrying sign. I think that is a worrying sign. I think they should have left it to the board, and the board ought to put on the replacement for Murray, who retires in two or three weeks' time. Uh, Gonski, who I know quite well, he must feel a bit odd about it all. He was sent in to uh, find out what the board wanted to do. Next minute they appoint him. Well, anyway, he's a pretty good fellow, Gonski. Oh, he has he been is. successful in business, so he, mm. he won't be a bad choice. No, he, he would be a good choice. He's probably already... better than Costello. He's had more business experience. Yes, but but I guess the issue is is apparently the other board members are not happy with it because in their view he was sent in. They spoke to him on a confidential basis. They yes. know, he knows their likes and dislikes, and all of a sudden he'll be in charge of them, and that, that's not really a good way to do it. No, I agree. I couldn't agree with you more. I think it happened by accident. Uh, not bizarre. No. Anyway, like look, most of the things that go on in this federal government. Yeah. But look, if David Gonski does end up running the future fund, I mean, well, he's quite right. Okay, right. Well, it's in the, 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 day. Yeah, the good news is is that he will be a, a very safe pair of hands. And to be honest, you probably couldn't wish for anybody more more capable to run such a large chunk of money. Well, well except he's a lawyer. No well, worries, mate. That is true. not a businessman. <laughs> he has. He's been chairman of a lot of companies. Now, uh, what about the uh, mining tax? Uh, could be unconstitutional, so Clive Palmer says. Yeah, I saw him on TV last night. He's an interesting fellow, Clive Palmer. His hair has gone from jet black to snow white in the past 12 months. I suspect that's got more to do with the lack of application of hair dye than any great concern in his life. But look, he was on TV saying that the, the legal advice he's had is that the mining tax is unconstitutional. He's also very upset that Wayne Swan decided to write an essay criticising people like him and Gina Reinhart for influencing government policy. Well, Swan was on the radio this morning hammering him on 3 0 yeah. getting stuck into him. It was, it was really obnoxious, I thought. And I know that Swan's an idiot. He's an absolute idiot, in my view. I know many people are calling Wayne Goose instead of Wayne Swan. But look, the issue with the mining tax is this. The, the original resources super profits tax was never going to fly. It was badly thought out. It was, it was, it was far too draconian. The, the renegotiated mineral resources rent tax, I think, is acceptable to the mining industry. And Clive well, Palmer, only to the big companies. Only to the, the big small ones. ones are going to suffer from it. I think it's absolutely wrong. Because somebody... You know, why, do you, why do you... The goose that lays the gold and eggs is a good thing. I think it's a disaster, the tax. You work out your tax rates and everybody pays the same. Every well, corporation. that's true. And and I, as for the nonsense about letting small business get a 1% drop this year and big business a year later... That is just sheer nonsense. There's no equity in that at all. No, I know, but I mean, it's the it's the it's the government trying to sort of take away some of the ground that the coalition might have. But what is exactly. interesting is that the Greens have come out and said, well, they don't support the tax break for big business at all. No. And apparently, the whole thing could fall over in the parliament because if the Greens uh, oppose it for that reason, and the coalition opposes it just because they'll oppose whatever the government does, then it might actually fall well, over. Well, no, the logic of the loop of Abbott is that. You're imposing this tax which we're going to take away and you're using the revenue from this tax to reduce another tax. Yes. It's just ridiculous. Yes, it's just shifting money from one thing to another thing. But of course, that, that's what taxes do. I mean, that's what taxes and spending are about. But the point is, it might yet fall over. And if that mineral resources rent tax does not pass through the parliament, that's another... Well, no, no, it'll pass through. The thing well, that might fall over is the tax. That's not, that's not how I'm seeing it being read. I think there's a possibility the whole thing falls over. In which case, it's been through the lower house and it's only got to go through the upper house yeah. and the Greens and the government are on side. Well, go no, through. But, okay, what I'm saying is the Greens and the government aren't necessarily on side about this. Anyway, just you just wait and see. Um, it, it could be another big thorn in the government's side. And, of course, it just shows how powerful the Greens are and I think that is also a cause for concern. But, it, but is, it, is it unconstitutional? Well, it's not... interesting in the press release or the statement made by the government that if it is unconstitutional will use another power. I, I don't believe it's unconstitutional. Essentially, the federal government these days, look, if it, if it can pass a law, then it becomes... You know, I'm reasonably familiar with the Australian Constitution. I know there's a debate about whether resources are owned by the states or the federation. This is not a tax, of course, on resources, unlike the, law, the, the, the um, royalties that the states charge. It is a tax on profits. And, you know, the federal government does tax profits. So I think it will get through on that basis. Well, the footy season's only two weeks away and we're all looking forward to it. Uh, Grand Prix will come and go, as it always does. And then we'll get down to the sensible part of the sporting season, the mighty blues and all the rest. <laughs> Look forward to it. See you next week.